and stealing from the world its greatest masterpiece. The Medici appeased Michelangelo with a smaller commission, a church library for San Lorenzo. It may not have been on the same scale as the facade, but the Laurentian Library would herald Michelangelo's arrival as a revolutionary architect. He created a building, the like of which had never been seen before. Michelangelo reinvented classical architecture and created his own brilliant and distinctive style. He designed every last detail from the floor to the desks. But as he worked, Michelangelo was caught up in a war which would test his loyalties to the extreme. For years, the Medici family had vied for power in Florence against the Republican government. When the Medici were overthrown in 1527, Michelangelo took the side of the Republic. This was a mistake which would threaten his life. When the Medici returned to power, they were determined to avenge his treachery. Thirty years ago, a remarkable discovery was made at San Lorenzo, which sheds light on this dark episode in Michelangelo's life. A security guard discovered a hidden door leading to a long lost room. Inside, the walls were covered with drawings, but this was no ordinary graffiti. It's a fascinating series of drawings, many of which relate to Michelangelo's work when they were first discovered, many people were certain they were by Michelangelo. And down the wall here, a figure from the Sistine Chapel ceiling, Eve. So many people believe this was the place where he hid for three months after the fall of the Republic. I've heard rumors that a man has been hired to assassinate me. This morning, I was coming out of the San Nicolo Gate and suddenly there's this figure here whispering in my ear that if I don't get out of town immediately, my life is in serious danger. And just as suddenly, he's gone. Now, I don't know if this was God, the devil, but I'm leaving. Michelangelo returned only when the Medici Pope Clement VII guaranteed his safety in return for his resuming work on a family mausoleum at San Lorenzo. Here in the Medici Chapel for the first time Michelangelo realizes a lifelong ambition to combine architecture and sculpture. But Michelangelo has broken every single rule in the book and he has in a sense liberated architecture from this point onward. People begin to invent and do things with architecture. Notice how the doors are so much smaller than the tabernacles over top. The whole architecture seems to be stretched upwards so that up at the very top we have windows that even seem to taper towards the light. For after all, we're meant to be feeling as if we were in the realm of the dead and we will resurrect our bodies to the realm of light. In the architecture of death that Michelangelo has created, of course, it's the famous statues that everybody pays attention to. The two ducal tombs of Lorenzo and Giuliano behind me with the four famous figures of the times of day. I portrayed night as a woman and put an owl, the bird of night, at her feet. I even left a small piece of marble to carve some maps. If only I'd had a chance to finish it. Such a pertinent symbol to mouse. Forever gnawing. Like time. It devours everything. Before the Medici tombs could be finished, Michelangelo suddenly left for Rome, never to return to Florence. He was drawn there by a young nobleman whom he'd met in the autumn of 1532. His name was Tommaso de Cavalieri. After years of claiming he needed no one, Michelangelo had fallen in love. 
and I shall deeply grieve not being able to have the past again, so as to serve you for longer than just in the future, which will be short, because I am too old. There is no more to say. Read the heart, not the letter, for the pen cannot encompass fond feelings. As a famous artist, to be attracted to this young man who was awed to have drawn the admiration of such a figure was perhaps for Michelangelo to see in Tommaso Cavalieri, in his aristocracy, in his education, in his beauty, all that Michelangelo himself in one sense would have wanted to be. I love you with my lips and groan that still your love can't reach my heart. And all it knock and force the door that joys of all kinds flock about my heart, your purpose to fulfill. Michelangelo writes these sonnets to him, which are breathless in their love for him. There's no question about it. You can feel him palpitating with love for this man. You are to make it quite clear. This was a love of pure beauty. There was nothing indecent or lascivious in it. I don't believe it for a moment. I think he's covering up quite a lot over that. One must also remember that as far as homosexual love was concerned in 15th and early 16th century Italy, you could actually be executed for it, although there's an awful lot went on. At the time, a harsh moral climate was closing in. The Catholic Church faced the biggest challenge in its history. Rome had been sacked by foreign soldiers, and the Protestant Reformation was sweeping Europe. These turbulent times shaped Michelangelo's next masterpiece. Thirty years after he'd completed the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, he was commissioned to paint one final scene, the last judgment on the altar wall. This new painting would send shockwaves through the Vatican. One of the cardinals, who's an interfering half-wit, is complaining to the Pope that so many nudes exposing their private parts is improper for the papal chapel. Here we have before us the last judgment, the apocalypse, the end of the world. And all he's worried about is what we're going to be wearing or not wearing. There was a growing sense that what had been acceptable in the 15 teens was no longer politically correct in the late 1530s and the 1540s. The nudes are always directly in front of those present at the Pope's Mass. One cannot therefore pray at the Pope's Mass without seeing Michelangelo's nudes. Despite the criticism, Michelangelo would persevere against all odds. Even when he fell from the scaffolding, he refused treatment. The last judgment was so close to his heart that he included himself among the resurrected in the flail skin of St. Bartholomew. He took revenge on the master of ceremonies who had complained about the nudity by consigning him to hell. One's first impression of The Last Judgment is just the confrontation of hundreds and hundreds of figures, but I think it's an extremely subtle and sophisticated organization, utilizing what is standard, the layering of the souls and the movement down on one side of the damned and the rising of the resurrected. All of his contemporaries recognize The Last Judgment to be one of the final statements of Michelangelo's art and of Catholic theology. The Sistine Chapel was now complete. From the creation to the apocalypse, Michelangelo had depicted the greatest story ever told at the very heart of Christendom. By now, he was in his 70s. His health was failing. But the reigning pope, Paul III, had one last challenge for him. It was nothing less than building the new Rome, a city that would surpass the glories of its classical past.
Here we see the principles of architecture at work. Order, proportion, design, and style. Detail, from the floor to the desks. But as he worked, Michelangelo was caught up in a war which would test his loyalties to the extreme. For years, the Medici family had vied for power in Florence against the Republican government. When the Medici were overthrown in 1527, Michelangelo took the side of the Republic. The stealing from the world its greatest masterpiece. The Medici appeased Michelangelo with a smaller commission, a church library for San Lorenzo. It may not have been on the same scale as the facade, but the Laurentian Library would herald Michelangelo's arrival as a revolutionary architect. He created a building, the like of which had never been seen before. Michelangelo reinvented classical architecture and created his own brilliant and distinctive style. He designed every last... This was a mistake which would threaten his life. When the Medici returned to power, they were determined to avenge his treachery. Thirty years ago, a remarkable discovery was made at San Lorenzo, which sheds light on this dark episode in Michelangelo's life. A security guard discovered a hidden door leading to a long lost room. Inside, the walls were covered with drawings, but this was no ordinary graffiti. It's a fascinating series of drawings, many of which relate to Michelangelo's work. And when they were first discovered, many people were certain they were by Michelangelo. And down 